good. A um, few latecomers, it's been good. You missed it. And get in on it. Get, get in on it. Don't, don't stand outside during church. That's like a bunch of people going to the steakhouse and standing around outside while everybody's eating steak. Get in here and, be, and get what God has for you. The Lord will bless you for it. Um, all you folks that are watching online, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you being here, uh, with us this morning and watching at home also. Lots and lots and lots of people are watching our services right now in other countries, and uh, it just it just amazes me. We get letters from uh, emails or whatever them things are, messages from Canada, uh, and places that we can't have church. Thank you for having it so we can be a part of it. We have people in other states that say, I feel like I'm a member of our church. And I thought, well, I wish our members felt like they was a member. Uh, but uh, we, it's been good, and we thank the Lord for all you people that are watching online. And also, I want to thank everybody who went out yesterday. Yesterday was a, a good day. Uh, young people went out with about to the tune of 25 or 30. Uh, and just, I mean, <laughs> woo, we can expect some feedback off of that. They bombed this town. Uh, everybody who... We got a bunch of them in the junior church. Everybody who went out yesterday giving out tracts or witness to the bus route, raise your hand, please. Raise your hand, please. There was a bunch of them. Thank you. And there's a bunch back there. We had a good time. Good time. Now, we're going to do it different this Saturday because we're having church at 2 o'clock. Don't forget, church starts at 2 o'clock Saturday. We're going to have preachers from everywhere, all over the country, preaching one right after another. West Virginia, Texas, Florida, everywhere. Uh, you'll love it. You'll love it. And then we break for hot dogs at 5 o'clock. And then the big service is at 6 o'clock. I'm, I'm preaching. We're going to illustrate a sermon Saturday night entitled, A Teenager's Worst Nightmare. The absolute worst thing could happen for a teenager. That'll be Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. All right, here we go. John chapter 14. I want to look at this, some of the most well-loved scripture in the Bible. So well-loved that we skip over its... It's, it's the blessing of it sometimes. Sometimes these verses that you know by heart lose their, their real meaning to you if you ain't careful. So look at this. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. If I go, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Plain as day, can't get no clearer than that. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I want to stop reading this morning, there this morning, and preach on the subject, God's cure for heart trouble. God's cure for heart trouble. They say heart, cardiac trouble, and uh, heart trouble is, is number one or two killer in the world today of heart disease, one, way, one thing or another. And here the Lord told these guys, he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Now, he wasn't speaking of that organ in our body that pumps blood, but our heart, the inner us, the real us, the inside of us. Now, I want to introduce this message by leading you up to why he said what he said here. And the disciples at this time in his ministry were scared. Does that remind you of anybody today? They were worried. Does that remind you of any Christian today? They were afraid. They were confused. They were bewildered. They were perplexed, tore up. All them words that you can use. Just like Christian people are today. Now, you got to remember, the Lord picked these guys out and called them uh, uh, from their, their jobs, a fisherman, whatever, and he said, come follow me. And they got behind him, and they followed him for three, and at this time, one half years. Now, imagine you're following Jesus for three and a half years, working miracles, being sent out and given special power to heal diseases, raising dead people. Seeing crowds of four and five thousand at one time, and there's talk of the him setting up the kingdom, and they were under Roman dominion at that time. 
And I mean, I mean, they were pumped, as they say nowadays. I mean, these guys were excited. Uh, they said, Lord, have mercy, the Messiah's here, the kingdom's coming. Uh, they were so sure of it, they had even been arguing back and forth over who would be greatest and who got to sit where. And, and you know, they'd fussing back and forth. I'm going to sit beside him. I'm going to sit on his right hand and left hand. I mean, they, these guys were expecting uh, the kingdom to show up at any time and expecting the Lord just to smash Rome and rule the world. That's what they thought. The kingdom would come. John the Baptist come preaching it. Repent. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they, and they thought it was coming. Now all of a sudden, he gives them some very discouraging words. He says, I'm leaving. They said, you're leaving? I thought, I thought, I'm going. And he told them, listen, where I go, you, don't, you can't come. Now he spake of his dying death on the cross and then him going back to heaven, but they didn't understand that. They didn't understand what the Lord was doing. Great lesson here. Just because we don't understand what God's doing don't mean that God don't know what God's doing. You listening? Listen, if you're a child of God, God has a plan for your life, and brother, he can work it all out, and we'll work it out. You, your job ain't to figure it out. Your job is just to trust him and believe in him, and like he said here. So I'm going to try to help some of you this morning that are always worrying and always have anxiety and always tore up. I'm going to try to help you if you'll listen. If you listen, you come to church to listen. Don't talk to the person beside you. Don't, don't, don't get up and walk out. Listen to the word of God, and God will help you if you listen. It's His plan. It pleases God. That's the instruction from the word of God. Listen to this. He told them disciples. He said, "One of you is going to betray me." And they thought, "Oh my goodness!" And they all start saying, "Is it me? Is it me?" Lord, we had this good thing going. We was having four and 5,000 people getting saved, people getting raised from the dead. And now you're telling us that one of us is going to be, that can't, that can't be. So that, that they, they worried about that. And then he said in chapter 13, one of you, which was about the leader of the group, is going to deny me three times. Great preacher. You mean to tell me that great preacher is going to do something like that? Yeah. Lord, this don't sound right. This don't sound like what we've been led to believe all these years. This don't sound like what we, it, it ain't turning out like we thought it was supposed to. And he said, not only that, I'm leaving. You're leaving. God, you, you're going to leave us, Jesus? Yes. Where are you going? I ain't going to tell you, but where I'm going, you can't come. Don't you know them guys is tore up? Now listen, people. Listen, so he comforts them in chapter 14 and says these words. Brother Danny is going to say these words to you this morning. Let not your heart be troubled. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord said, you might not understand it now. You might not know what's going on now. You might think everything's gone to pieces now. But I'm telling you, don't let your heart be troubled. That's the first thing I want to talk about. You know what that, when I read that scripture, I thought that he's implying that some, that's something you got to choose to do. In other words, a lot of people say, well, I can't help it. I'm discouraged. I can't help it. I, I'm tore up. I can't. Help it. The Lord said, don't let it do that to you. So listen, don't, I mean, I'm not fussing at you, but sometimes you have a choice not to feel like you're feeling all the time. And instead of drowning yourself in self-pity and saying, poor me, I'm discouraged, I'm ready to give up, the Lord said, don't let yourself think like that. You know what I do sometimes? The devil will jump all over me, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, that person quit, that person mad, that person backslid, that person... And sometimes I have to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am not going to feel like this today. I am not going to... God's been good to me. He told me not to let my heart be troubled. And by the grace of God, I'm not going to let it be troubled. Amen? 
Now listen, that now sometimes, not always, sometimes, listen to me, when you're scared, when you're worried, when you have anxiety, when you have fear, you know what you got to do? You got to say, wait a minute here. I believe in God. I believe also in Him. I'm not going to let this control me. By the grace of God, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go on. I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to wallow in my self-pity and, and my fears and my scares. He said, don't let it be trouble, brother. Don't let it be trouble. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm, I'm not going to let it. He said, don't let it. They, they thought, Lord, we could be arrested. He said, don't let your heart be trouble. They thought, Lord, we could die. And they were and did. People were terrified. Preachers, preachers right now, there's more Christians that have their heart trouble than any time I've ever seen since I've been preaching. You got people absolutely scared to death to even come to church. And I, somebody asked me the other day, uh, somebody called me from somewhere, and they said, well, Brother Danny, you know, you know, you have all those people in there for that youth rally and everything. And they said, uh, there's a risk to that. And I said, I understand that. There certainly is a risk. And people come to church. But I'm going to tell you something, people. And uh, you look at me for a second. I believe and I'm persuaded the risk of us not having church and the risk of what that could do to our kids and the risk of our kids not being in something like this is far greater than any risk that they might have getting sick. You talk about risk, brother. We, we got the most sissified bunch of generation of Christians. Listen, everything's a risk. As you drive down the road, it's a risk. You live it. I mean, you eat at a restaurant. It's a risk. Brother, there's, this world ain't settled. We got to believe in God and believe also in Him. Amen. You say, but I, you know what our problem is? We want to see it. We want to feel it. We want to touch it. You say, well, what if I get the coronavirus? Listen, if you get sick with a coronavirus, you have a 99.9% .9 chance of surviving. That's better than a car wreck. Unless you're older or have bad condition. I'm not downplaying it, uh, but they're upplaying it is what I'm trying to make you think level-headed. They're upplaying it. They say, y'all downplaying the virus. No, they're upplaying it. Amen. I'm telling you this. Listen, we're all going to die one day anyway. So you might as well serve God and do right and honor the Lord and not, not belong to the cult of lockdownism. Amen. Oh, Brother Danny, pe listen, people are crazy these days. People are absolutely gone crazy. Uh, the Pharisees wanted to kill the best thing that ever happened to them, and that was Jesus Christ showing up. We're living in a time when we never thought we'd see. Our next-door neighbor, Canada, is now locking down, locking up pastor. You hear about the pastor in Canada? This is not a crazy wild-eyed fanatic. This is not a nut that don't, uh, that uh, cult. this is a, a, a gracious preacher that loves the Lord. They told him you cannot have people in that church in Canada. This is not Russia. This is not China. This is Canada. Canada. It's getting closer and closer and closer. They said if you have church, you'll be arrested. They had church. They locked that pastor up for 35 days. He spent behind bars. They told him, uh, I appreciate the guy. I don't know him, but I appreciate him. They, they went to him and they said, all you have to do is sign a paper that says you won't open that church no more and we'll let you out. He said, I can't do that. And it's ongoing in a fight, in a battle right now. Listen, people. While that pastor was in that jail for 35 days, that prison released 400 violent criminals out in the public. Now, you can sit and watch TV and be crazy if you want to, but anybody with a brain in their head knows something ain't right about that. There's a lot not right about that. You know why they let 400 prisoners go? So they wouldn't have to get the coronavirus and lock the pastor up. Buddy, we are in a war like you ain't never. Let me, I'm going to talk about some things here this morning, and I'm going to tell you what Jesus said about it. Listen to these articles. This is not China. That church for a few weeks, they built a fence around that church. You see that on you? They built a fence around it and put tarp 
around the fence. Armed policemen uh, with, with gas masks showed up at a church to keep people from worshiping. And there was not one person in that church had the coronavirus. Not one case. It's more, it's not about your safety and health. This whole thing is not about your safety and health. It's about dominance and government control and a one world order coming to this world. That's what it's about. They use the virus as an excuse to accomplish that goal. I'll now give you some quotes from the Pope of Rome. The Pope of Rome is viewed by the world to be the number one leading religious figure in the entire world. Pope Francis. Something don't sound right about that. A new book says things will never be the same after the pandemic. Calling instead for the establishment of a new world order. Here's the world's leading religious leader saying that we are to use the pandemic, to establish a new world order. It gets worse. In an interview based on his new book, God and the World to Come, scheduled to release last week or two, the pontiff reiterates his case for the Great Reset. So the Pope is pushing the Great Reset with a shift away from financial speculation, fossil fuels, military buildup, and a green economy based on inclusiveness. So the Pope's book is about quit building military, love everybody and include everybody, let the earth be our mother and don't do nothing, don't throw down a piece of paper, quit driving cars, and using fuel, and everybody include one another. That's his message to the world. Who are you, a little i tell you who I am. I am a Bible-believing preacher. And according to this book right here, that categorizes the Pope as a false prophet. The hope of this world, ladies and gentlemen, is not to save planet Earth. God is going to one day burn this earth up and make a new one. The hope of this world is trusting the Lord Jesus Christ to get us out of this mess and get saved by the grace of God. Listen to this. Quote, quote the Pope. He said, no one today can afford to rest easy. The world will never be the same. It is precisely within this calamity that we must grasp those signs which may prove to be the cornerstone of reconstruction. Now, you're talking fancy, but you can see what he's saying. We cannot emerge from this crisis the same as before. There is something worse than this crisis, the drama of wasting it. The Pope said, we are studying on solidarity, and studying innovative methods to eradicate bullying, poverty, and corruption, all working together, each for their own part, without delegating things to each other. The new world order will be based on eradicating inequalities and attending to the environment. There has never been a preacher called by God to take care of the environment or to eradicate inequalities. Never. The news media has three subjects they rotate on. Coronavirus, race wars, and UFOs. And all of those are being used to stir up. You know why this race war stuff is on on TV all the time? To make everybody hate each other. Listen, they ain't nobody no better than nobody else. No one color is no better than nobody else. Amen? Anybody got a brain in their head knows that. Nobody's any better than anybody. God don't love one person any love another. Listen, we are, we are, but, but listen, people, that, 
there's, it's never going to be solved by fighting and killing each other and never going to be helped by passing law. The only way people are ever going to get along is get right with God, be born again, and then you can love everybody. You love everybody if you're right with God. Listen to this. The quote, I'm quoting the Pope. The path to humanity's salvation passes through the creation of a new model of development which unquestionably, does that sound like the Apostle Paul to you? Or Charles Finney? Or Ed Maccabee? Does that sound like a Bible preacher to you? The path to salvation, humanity's salvation, passes through the creation of a new model which questionably focuses on coexistence among people in harmony with creation. Tree huggers, everybody love each other. Don't throw a piece of paper down. Throw your french fries out the window. I believe it's a sin to throw french fries down in the floor of a $20,000 car. <laughs> love that, don't they? They'd love that. You're, you're helping the economy feed the birds. Just throw the food out. I didn't say trash. Listen, don't throw french fries in your floorboard. That's sickening. If we don't roll up our sleeves and take care of the earth with radical and personal political choices and economic green turn by directing technological developments in this direction, sooner or later our common home will throw us out of the window. The Pope said that. Not one mention of salvation. Not one mention of getting saved. Not one word about heaven, hell, Jesus, the blood, or the cross. False prophet. Quote. We choose the enterprises to support based on four criteria, Pope Francis said. Inclusion of the excluded, nothing wrong with that. Promotion of the least common good, nothing wrong with that. And care of creation, a little bit wrong with that. Right now, it's a matter of rebuilding the rubble, he says. It's time to remove social justice and marginalization. That's a communist. Communists believe that everybody should be all the same. Everybody should make the same amount of money, distribute everything, because if everybody ain't no rich, ain't no poor, everybody's the same, the world will all be happy and we'll all get along with each other. That's what they believe. That's what a communist is. That's what a, that's what a nowadays Democrat believes. You say, Brother Danny, I can't believe you're talking about stuff. Well, you fast your seatbelt, it's going to get a little worse here in a second. You know why the Lord said, don't let your heart be troubled? Because this world's crazy, buddy. This world's gone crazy. Listen to this article. New COVID, their favorite word. People are in love with that word. Oh, I got the COVID. I got the COVID. Have you heard about the COVID? No, shut up. I ain't. I've heard about the Wuhan flu. How about that? New COVID variants have changed the game, and vaccines now are not enough. Wouldn't you know that was coming? At the end of 2020, seriously, there was, past tense, a strong hope that high levels of vaccination would see humanity finally gain the upper hand over SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. In an ideal scenario, the virus would then have been contained at low levels without disruption or numbers of death. But since then, new variants of concern have emerged and spread worldwide, putting current pandemic level control efforts, including vaccination, at a risk of being derailed. Surely you ain't going to tell us that. Put simply, the game has changed, and a successful global rollout of current vaccines by itself is no longer a guarantee of victory. After all them billions... No one is truly safe from COVID-19 until everyone is safe. What a bunch of junk. You mean tell me nobody's safe if there's one person in China? Well, it's the same way with everything else. It's the same way with any other disease. Nobody's safe till everybody's safe. You know when that'll be? When we get to heaven. As members of the Lancet COVID-19 Commission Task Force, we call for urgent action. Track emerging variances, genomic surveillance. We cannot rely on vaccines to protect us, but must maintain strong public health measures. Lockdownism. 
At the same time, you know what that means? We must accelerate the vaccine program in all country in an admissible, in an equitable way. You know what that means? That means push it and push it and push it and shut the economy down so we can break the economy and make everybody equal all over the world. With all this going on, people are crazy. Just like China. Who would have believed that a church in Canada would have to meet underground like they do in communist countries? They're going to meet underground. You say, Brother Danny, is that going to come here? If the Lord don't come, it will come here eventually. Now, I hope and pray he takes us out before that. But if he don't, it will come here eventually. Because their job is to shut us up. And some of y'all better get on the ball and figure out whose side you're on because you'll fall out like flies, brother, when it really gets bad. I mean, if this, if this little bit has knocked you out, you ain't got a chance when it really gets God give us all grace. God give me grace. God give us all grace. And I tell you what we better do. We better have church while we can. You better get on fire while you can. You better quit laying at home. You better quit to, you know, watching the dirty movies. You better get the junk out of your life and get right because it's a fixing to get worse. That's what the Lord told them. That's what the Lord told them. If you heard in the last two days, or three days now, UFO sightings have doubled during the last year for some weird reason in New York City. They filmed them. I'm talking about the Navy. I'm not talking about some weird sci-fi documentary where somebody was drunk and saw a fish jump out of the water and a light come over the pond and, you know, they just hallucinate. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the Navy of the United States of America has video of triangle-shaped objects flying over. And you say, oh, Brother Danny, you're going to tell us they're a little mean from Russia, I mean from Martians from uh, 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 planet Mars? No. Ain't no men on planet Mars. I never have believed in aliens from outer space. They're demonic creatures coming from down there, transforming themselves as an angel of light like your Bible says. Why all of a sudden? Why all of a sudden is everybody, listen, y'all remember I preached that 20 something years ago. People thought I was crazy. People, preachers put articles about me in the newspaper. Castle, this is UFO theory, theory of your foot, brother. That's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. And now it's a hundred times worse. So they're seeing these things. And I know a lot of Christians say, oh, don't you just think that's advanced technologies from Russia we don't know about? Advanced technology that can go into the ocean, they got it on video, and come back out and go a 1,000 miles an hour and make a right-hand turn, right-angle turn like that. A human being or an alien couldn't stand that. Inertia or whatever that is, you can't go a 1,000 miles an hour and stop and turn like that. Like smash you. That's impossible. And can this, Russia has invented stuff that can disappear and then reappear on the other side of the sky? I don't think so. So you, you got the world's political leader, the world's religious leaders, movie stars, Hollywood, all of them saying the same thing. They're all starting to come together and, and to gather them together into bundles to burn them, is what the Bible says. And all the religious leader, the political leaders, the athletes, everybody's starting to say the same thing. We're all going to get to You know who's left out? People like us that think for themselves. We're not just blind followers of the blind that swallows everything they put on CNN or any other news channel. Well, we, we got a Bible and we think for ourselves and we say, listen, that ain't no, that, they say those, those UFOs are coming to straighten us and they're saying a big bombshell's coming in June. I just can't wait to see what that is. In June, they're going to really dump it on us. I can't wait. I've been telling people 25 years. They're coming. They're coming. When that thing, I ain't, gonna, I ain't a prophet. But let's just suppose one of them things come down and then all of a sudden they land, buddy, and some things get out and they meet with world leaders and they say, we planted you people here a, a thousand, millions of years ago and we've been monitoring you and you are finally just now being able to accept our plan because all these old crazy beliefs held you back for years and years. And, and these people, and they say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, really? Really? Well, I knew something there's more to it than this. I knew this was probably an experiment. When it's on TV every single day and it's in books and print everywhere you look and then all of a sudden they said but there's just this one group of people there's one group of people that won't accept this and something's got to be done with them uh, before we can initiate our worldwide global plan and you know me and you's in that one little group of people and something is going to be done with us 
They want us out of the way, we're going to get out of the way. They want us to quit preaching to them, we're going to quit. He said, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. What if, what if this all faith, if unfolds like it? And I believe it is. I don't know if we'll see it or not. I believe that's the way it's coming. And when it happened, say, Brother Danny told us. We thought he'd, about, he'd been smoking pot. <laughs> who'd ever thought, who'd ever thought that, uh, that you get together and have a family reunion and smoke pot and the illegal part's the family reunion? <laughs> who in the world? You think we ain't crazy in this country? You think, we, you think we ain't lost time? And I'm up here this morning giving you straight truth. And some of y'all saying, that, that ain't what I've been hearing. Yeah, that's exactly right. It ain't what you've been hearing. It sure ain't, buddy. Listen, brother, it's getting more and more and more, and everything's climate change, climate change, climate change. It's, uh, you remember it was global warming for a long time until they couldn't get people to believe that no more because you might get a half a degree every 10 years. That ain't nothing to worry about. God's got the weather. So now they just say climate change. And if you start your car, you know what the Pope said? The Pope said we've got to stop this arms race, get everybody to quit making weapons. You know the only country dumb enough to do that? Listen. You think Russia's going to quit making nuclear weapons? Or China, you're crazy, buddy. Listen, it ain't going to happen. I hate war. I don't want nobody to get killed or nothing like that. But, buddy, we are in a war zone. And according to the Bible, there are at least three big wars in the future. At least three. At least. And, ladies and gentlemen, that the Lord told them. You say, well, Brother Daniel, I thought you was going to encourage my heart. I am. I am. He said, I'm a leaving. I'm a leaving. Uh, but he said, i tell you what. I'm coming back after you. He said, I'm leaving. He didn't leave but three days. And then he went with them on the, after, the, after the resurrection. And he said, I'm going back to heaven. But he said, I promise you, I'm coming back to get you. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something this morning? The Lord has not forgot his people. The Lord has not forgot me and you. He's coming back after us. Lady, let him pack the court. He'll, he'll unpack it one of these days. Oh, and he straightens this mess out. Let him, let him have a, a signs and bumper stickers and, and fuss about Christians and call us names. He'll straighten it out one of these days. Let them talk about us preaching to them. Let us tarp a, uh, uh, one of the girls give a, give a track to a, a kid yesterday, about a 17 year old boy and he grabbed it away from his sister and just wadded it up like that in front of him. Let them do it. Let them cuss God. Let them talk about the church. The Lord said I'll come and get you. He'll come and get us. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let them pervert marriage. Brother let them legalize marijuana and alcohol and everything else. He said, I'll be back. He said, if I go away, I will come again. He's coming, hallelujah. He's coming, hallelujah. He's coming, hallelujah. The Lord of glory is coming, people. Let not your heart be troubled. I don't know what we might have to go through between now and then, but one thing is for sure. Our God in heaven has not forgotten us. I'm telling you, he's coming, y'all. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Coming. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't sit around, wring your hands, and take aspirins all day long. Say, Lord, I know you're coming. I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. Amen. You ought to shout about that. Yes. You know why you can't rejoice? You've been sinning. You've been sinning. I can tell by looking at you. That's right. Them fake smiles don't work. <laughs> I, I've been looking at people too long. See, you think it's hard to look at me for 30 minutes. You ought to look what I got to look at. Give me a hard on the eyes, man. <laughs> but I tell you, I tell you something, people. The Lord said he's coming. The Lord said he's coming. He said he's coming. Somebody said this, perhaps today will be the last and time shall be forever past. Our light affliction well, we'll be o'er, then glory, glory evermore. Our days of toil and pain shall cease, and faithful workers will rest in peace. Perhaps today mine eyes shall see the King of kings that died for me. Oh, 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 yes, oh, soul of mine, nothing else will matter then if unto him I've faithful been. Live for that day, oh, soul of mine, and eternal glory will be thine. I'm telling you, he's coming. He's coming one of these days, and he's going to say, 
come up hither. And when that day comes, you'll hear your name. I'll hear my name. There'll be a loud big maker, like a big thunder break, maybe shake half the world, I don't know. But we'll leave this world with a shout up from them mill village hillsides on all these little old towns here in the south. They'll come out of the graves. Up from the rural suburbs of these old cities out here in these little old graveyards, the graves will be open. The saints of God's body is going to come out of them graves and he'll bring back their souls with him. They'll get their brand new body. We'll all be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. There's your report brother there's the good news we've been waiting on I'm telling you up, up from a steering wheel of an 18 wheeler going down the interstate somewhere bam buddy you're out of here sitting in a prison cell somewhere there's a lot of good saved people in prison they made a mistake they got in trouble but they're right with God and serving the Lord they'll get right out of that prison leave right out of there and leave the wicked guard that didn't believe standing there with his gun thank God brother businessmen we crossing the street in big old cities and the briefcase will fall and hit the dirt and they'll rise, concrete, and they'll rise uh, to meet the Lord there. Oh, country boy will be out here plowing somewhere with his tiller out in daddy's garden and lay her down and go to heaven. Amen. Lonely people. Uh, some lonely lady will be fixing her hair, maybe trying to uh, clean up an old motel room somewhere, wiping sweat, and the Lord will call her out of here. You say, well, brother, so if you're down on yourself all the time, Cheer up, man. You're going to look a lot better the time the Lord gets through with you. And we're going to feel a lot better. That's right. You hear about that guy said he, 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 sent his, he sent his picture in the Lonely Hearts Club, and they wrote him back and said, we're not that lonely. <laughs> <laughs> like that girl, like that girl sent her picture in the Ripley's, believe it or not, and they sent back, we don't believe it. Lord's going to fix that one of these days. He's going to fix it. And then finally, look where we're going. Look where we're going. In my Father's house are many mansions. If you got the right Bible. If you got a new weird version of the Bible, that verse says rooms. When I was reading them, if your Bible said rooms, you got cheated. You're going to live in a room forever and ever and ever. And ever. Do you know what the definition of mansion is? I looked up some, some famous man like the Billmore House. That's a mansion. Oh, Brother Danny, that's what's carnal, worldly thing. No, you don't, you don't think that. You don't want to live in a room right now. You sure ain't going to want to then. And a mansion is a large, impressive house divided into sections, and you never have a fear. You'll never have a problem. You'll never have a burden. You'll never get sick. Your relationships will always be perfect. You will never be divorced. You will totally be satisfied all the time with perfect worship, perfect health, in the Lord's presence forever and ever and ever and ever. Now, if you can show me a deal better than that, see me after service. And I'll preach on that next Sunday. You're going to live in a mansion. Amen. I like to hear that old, uh, old girl saying, I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. That's a Lord of a sort of not perfect song, but man, the thoughts there, buddy. Whoa, I'm a going up yonder, going up yonder, going up yonder, going up yonder to be with my Lord. That makes me want to shout when I hear them do that. Woo! Brother, I'm going up yonder. Amen. I mean, you can stay down here and worship the Antichrist, take the, the mark of the beast on your hand and submit to global lockdownism if you want to. I'm going up yonder. And as far as I'm concerned, sooner the better. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You say, Brother Danny, it's hard not to work. I know it is. I'm, I'm the same way as you. I want to see how it's all going to work out. And I don't know how it's all going to work out. But no matter which way it goes, he said, I will come and get you and receive you to myself that where I am, there you're going to be also. That's God's cure for your troubled heart this morning. Let's stand, let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. She's going to play softly this morning. 
Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're here this morning. Say, preacher, that was to me. It's exactly what I needed to hear. I'm going to quit trying to figure everything out, and I'm just going to trust the Lord in simple, childlike faith. I'm just going to believe him. Come on. Come on, let's get down here and pray. This is the invitation. Come on, right now. We're not going to have any singing. This is the invitation. Some's already come. You come on right now. Slide right in your seat, ma'am, sir. Some of you, you've just been worried sick, and it ain't going to do you a bit of good. It ain't going to do you a bit of good. You might as well just say, Lord, I'm going to trust your promise. I'm going to do right. I'm going to serve you and do the absolute best I can to live for you and serve you. Oh, God, please help me. Please help me. Come on, right now. Come on, right now. Somebody need to get your heart right with God. You fooling around. When I was talking about the Lord coming back, you thought, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Why don't you come right now? Why don't you come? Come on, right now. Come on, right now. Maybe you're here and you've never been saved by the grace of God. You need to come get saved this morning. Come on. Come on, right now. Will you do that? Come on, others, others, others. Just slip right out of your seat. Say, Lord, I'm going to come back and spend the rest of my days living right and serving you. God, help you to do that right now. We do it. We do it right now. Amen. Amen. Others coming. Amen. 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 We're going to pray. You want to get in on this? Come on right now. You want to get in on it? Come on right now. Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, I want to thank you for these in the altar this morning. Thank you for the moving of your spirit in here today. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would help every single person here today. God, meet the need of every heart. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, give us physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual strength to get the job done this week. We have a tremendous task in front of us. God, give me strength. Get it done. Lord, help us get it done for the glory of God. Move in here. Great and mighty power this weekend. Save souls. Change lives. Let people be delivered from sin. God, give people hope. Lord, I'm glad you said not to let our heart be troubled. Help us to live for you and serve you every day of our life. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. So I'm still praying now. Just a minute. Before you go. Amen. All right. All right.